Hello everybody, I'm back for uh, part two of my uh, recent jazz vinyl finds. Um, I thought I was going to break this up into three parts, but if I'm doing it this way, I think I can get the most of the rest of them uh, here in the last one. Anyway, um, so I have this kind of crazy notion of trying to collect basically everything from Impulse and ECM, and really I guess more or less from the vinyl era for ECM. So. ECM say from you know the 70s and 80s and even with impulse if I could just if I can get stuff from the 60s and early 70s that classic period of impulse I'd be happy I know that seems kind of strange I don't know if anybody out there is interested in collecting um, label re you know entire label releases but uh, there aren't a ton of labels that I would do that with but as far as jazz goes those are two and of course blue note but uh, Blue Note can get particularly expensive unless you're going for the reissues. Anyway, enough of that. Let's skip to the records here. Um, this is I got a few uh, Impulse records that were relatively cheap because they weren't necessarily the bigger releases on the label. This is uh, Chico O'Farrell, who I'm not familiar with. Next is uh, another Chico, Chico Hamilton, who I'm a little bit more familiar with. Americans in Europe. This is, uh, I'm not entirely sure the exact story behind this, but uh, it's a, obviously a live recording in Germany and some pretty big names on here. Um, Kenny Clark, Bud Powell. Um, I'm not as familiar with some of the other guys. I'm sure that within the jazz community are, are well known, and I've listened to this a few times. It's very nice. Steve Kuhn, uh, Raindrops. This is my second release by him. He's a piano player. He's put out a lot of stuff on ECM, even though this is on a different label. And so just knowing that, you can kind of get a feel for what his style is. It's, it is, um, I don't know, I, I, I guess he would be sort of like Keith Jarrett if you, you know, I don't know from a music theory perspective if 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 they're in the sort of same ballpark, but um, to my ears, they sound like, you know, they're, they're pretty close. So if you like Keith Jarrett, you probably like him. First Meditations, John Coltrane. And then Coltrane's Meditations. Herbie Nichols, who was somebody I just kind of stumbled upon recently. Um, interesting piano player. I think uh, he, he only put out, I think, three... I might be wrong about this. I think it was just three releases, proper releases in his lifetime. And uh, they were on Blue Note, so I don't know. Maybe he did have a couple on different labels. Um, he's known for uh, penning uh, Lady Sings the Blues with uh, Billie Holiday. That's his main claim to fame, I guess. Next, Sonny Rollins' uh, early 70s release. Here's a kind of strange released by Sonny Rollins. Uh, there will never be another U. Um, it's strange because it's live and he decided to kind of roam around the stage without his microphone. And uh, so there's there's periods of time in the songs where he's kind of in the faint background. It's really bizarre and it makes me wonder why they even released it. Unless there was some sort of contractual reason that they had to. I don't know. Sonny Rollins with Thad, Thad Jones. Kind of a beat cover, but the, the record itself is in good shape. Jack McLean and Company. This is with uh, Tuba, which is kind of an interesting. You know, you don't hear a, a ton of Tuba on uh, on records, except for I guess really early jazz. So uh, that kind of piqued my curiosity, and it's definitely excellent. Most of the Tuba is is pretty much an accompaniment as usual. It's kind of more the, the bass, kind of playing the bass role. Art Blakey, I guess self-titled, and the Jazz Messengers. This is uh, an early Impulse release, um, but this is an 80s reissue, which is why I was able to get it for such a good price. James Moody is another one I've, I'm interested in exploring more. I've got one other release by him, and I just, to me, his, uh, his sax playing. I think he's also known more as a, I don't know if he's known more as a flute player, but a flautist, I guess you would say. Um, 
but uh, here he plays tenor and alto sax and uh, he just has a really nice warm tone um, almost a little bit like some of the West Coast style players I guess and I don't know m more about him than that so I don't think he was a part of that scene at all because it was he's a little bit later this is a uh, NECM re uh, release where the, uh, the covers beat but the covers or the records it's a double uh, record a double LP records themselves are in, in good shape it's, uh, I guess it's Pat Metheny as far as he's being the leader of the band and it's got you know, a lot of the players that you know these guys are playing with together Charlie Hayden Jack DeJohnette Dewey Redman and Mike Brecker Got uh, Jan uh, Gabarik, I don't even know how you pronounce his last name, Gabarik, I guess. Uh, Keith Jarrett, and a couple of guys that uh, I'm not as familiar with. Um, a relatively early ECM release here, Belonging. Larry Coriel, Planet End. And this record is in perfect shape. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier with this. This is from 1975. It's got John, uh, John McLaughlin and uh, Chick Corea on it, and it's some really nice heavy uh, progressive jazz fusion. Excellent stuff. Now this was one of my uh, really prized possessions now in the sense of, uh, I got it, it's such a great price. This is one I've been kind of eyeing for a long time, Benny Maupin and the Jewel in the Lotus. Uh, it's one you don't see a ton in, uh, online. It usually goes for a really pretty penny. You'll see it on eBay for between 25 and 40 bucks. And somehow I managed to be the only one to bid on it on eBay and got it for under 10. And it's in great shape. It's a little bit different than I thought. That, you know, I heard him on other releases and I liked his playing. Um, sax player. I think he plays other instruments as well. But uh, yeah, he plays a glockenspiel on here. <clears throat> this one's a lot more uh, atmospheric than I was expecting. It's really a something that's almost meditative, you can kind of just sort of lose yourself in it. Let me go a little bit quicker here. Uh, Gary Burton Quintet with Eberhard Weber. And this is just excellent, excellent uh, music. It's got Pat Metheny on guitar and another guitar player, uh, Mick Goodrick. And uh, the guitar player on this is particularly, particularly good. Uh, some more Gary Burton Quintet. Picture this. Archie Shep, The Good Life. Got this for two bucks, and uh, it's it's really nice. It's uh, it's not real far. I've only listened to a few tracks, so I don't know. Maybe he goes off the deep end somewhere, but uh, it's 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 a little bit adventurous, but it's it's not crazy out there. So this is something that I would recommend for anybody. Another impulse, Zoot Sims Waiting Game. This is really, uh, this is my last one here. This is uh, really string heavy and uh, mellow, but it's still still good stuff. It's almost something you would kind of picture on in you know in a 40s or 50s noir movie. But, uh, anyway, that's the last of that, and I think that's pretty much caught me up with my recent jazz collection or uh, finds. See you next time.